welcome to the very first flip update. Demo began last week and the kitchen's almost completely cleared out. Little by little, progress is being made. I decided on a white paint for the paneling downstairs, and upstairs I tested out a few colors, selecting my gray for the closet doors and black for the interior doors. Downstairs, the fireplace got a big makeover, and today I'm going to show you what I learned about removing paint from brick, installing a floating mantle, and applying a mortar wash technique to your fireplace. I'm here now in the living room, and today I'm going to be starting the first DIY project of this flip, which is giving this fireplace a makeover. Some of the bricks have been painted, so I wanted to remove it first so I could start with a clean slate. Never tried removing paint from brick before, but I picked up some of this gel stripper, so we're about to find out if it works. I applied the citrus strip gel with a brush and let it sit for over 30 minutes. In the meantime, I also tried using sandpaper and found that it was pretty effective. Once the stripper dried, I tried scrubbing it off with an abrasive pad and wire brush, but it didn't completely remove the paint. And it didn't work at all on some of the bricks. Sanding seemed to be the best option, but it's time consuming and you'll go through the paper very fast. Since I'd been mortaring over most of the brick, it didn't matter if there was a little paint left over, so I was ready for the next phase. I picked up some reclaimed wood at the local lumber yard and had contractors help with installation. After getting the two vertical beams into place, they drilled four holes into the brick, inserted steel rods, and set them with masonry adhesive. The rods were then cut down and left to dry overnight. The next day, holes were drilled in the back of the mantle and construction glue applied before securely sliding it into place. With the mantle done, it was time to prep the fireplace for the mortar wash treatment. For this project, you'll need a bag of white mortar, a bucket, and various sponges, rags, and tools to scrub the mortar off the bricks. Working in batches, you'll mix your mortar with water until it thickens, then apply it with a stiff sponge. One tip I realized later is that it's best to focus on the joints and not cover the entire brick, because it's difficult to remove it all afterwards. Before the mortars fully dry, use a clean wet sponge and a wire brush to expose some of the brick underneath, keeping in mind that the brick will dry much lighter than it looks wet. Here you can see how the brick really comes through after it's wiped down with a damp sponge, but you'll notice how it dries lighter with the mortar residue on the right. After the mortars fully dried, you can continue to sand and wipe it down to expose more of the brick until you achieve your desired look. The mortar wash alone took around 10 hours over two days, but it's definitely worth it, especially given how inexpensive it was. I think the aged look really fits well with the old cottage style, and I love that it's unique and something that you don't see every day. If you enjoyed this first DIY project, you can head to my blog for more details, and make sure to subscribe to my channel for another tutorial in next week's episode.